So how y'all doing? We having a good day so far? I mean, it's already May, and we're starting to get some like almost uh, May-like weather, which is super. Right, we had sun a couple, three days now, which is fantastic. The sun today, I think it's supposed to be warmish, so that's nice. Um, and we just want to one more time say Happy Mother's Day for all of you uh, who celebrate that in in whatever capacity you do. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to you. Um, I'd like to call up my good friend uh, Jessica Neary to give away this uh, Spirit Award. Um, I uh, hand selected a small happy plant. Oh, uh, perfect. Uh, it would be appropriate. That's perfect. Uh, and she gives that uh, away to a well deserving. My husband texted me this morning and he's like, So there's a plant sale at work. And I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, Send me a text, a picture. And he's like, Oh, God, why did I even ask you? And then my daughter Libby's like, oh, He doesn't even limit you in how many plants you're going to have. He doesn't even care. And I'm like, oh, no. Oma. We're going to go with Oma. She, her new name is Oma. Um, okay. So this goes to Tony Heater. She's one of my very dear friends here at Keller Williams. I'll never forget the first time I met her at my very first team meeting, where she shared how much she grew her business from doing a consistent 36 touch. Um, this was my first team meeting, and I knew I wanted to get to know her. She has consistently hit it out of the park and has been the top individual agent for the past two years. She has also most recently changed the laws and is fighting for what is right for her beautiful daughter, Megan. She inspires me daily and we are two true comadres. Tony, this spirit award is for you and your amazing spirit. Continue to change the world. That's exactly that's what she's doing. That's cross to the next desk. That reminds me of like I uh, give my brother a gift for Christmas that I would want for myself. Right, a bowling ball with your initials. <laughs> Merry Christmas, here's a bowling ball with my initials. All right, I would like to take a couple minutes and say thank you to Cami Brown, who's been an indispensable member. <laughs> Always consistent, reliable, uh, a friend, and always with a friendly greeting uh, for our agents on weekends. So it's, uh, it is uh, with some sadness that we say goodbye. Um, you will truly be missed. And uh, thank you so much for all especially, of your contributions. Especially for making coffee for the <laughs> If you wouldn't mind coming up for just a second so I can have my resident hugger. <laughs> This is really hard because yes. it's just, Family. we just depend on her. She's just consistent. I don't have to worry if she's going to show up <coughs> to work or if you're going to treat the agents like you should. So I just appreciate that. We're really good to miss you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this was from Professionals Day because that was on a you had to work a weekend and I wasn't here, and so I held on to that to give that to you. And then this is just to say, oh, we love you and we appreciate you, and we're going to miss you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you came out. She will be missed. And we will be moving forward with my good friend Jamie to talk about the plays of the week. Hey, oh, the oh, week, yes. Uh, as you might have seen on social media, we continue to find something that, from one of y'all, that doesn't, doesn't just equate into numbers. Uh, something that goes beyond numbers, and it can be numbers, because sometimes things special happen. Laura went ahead, uh, she jumped out into an area of which we're going to speak of later today. Um, in social media, we're doing videos and such that she did not want to do. <laughs> and she's getting better and better at it. So she was the play of the week for that and for helping a new agent. Uh, and she spent a lot of time with them. And we just couldn't appreciate it more. And then Aubrey. Aubrey, it was perfect timing for Mother's Day because she was able to keep her business rolling uh, at a great clip while having morning sickness. <laughs> <laughs> My son the other day asked me if I'm having so. 
<laughs> pointed it, had, had it on my stomach. So, but anyway, Aubrey, that's amazing. Let's give it up for these two folks. If there's other things you hear and see about your fellow agents that goes above and beyond or uh, anything, let me know. Like Tony, that was a great example. Let's welcome some new agents. We have Don Peterson, Jennifer Wilson, and. Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay Whelan. <laughs> Say it up, ladies. <laughs> Welcome aboard. And let's congrats the cappers. We have Dwayne, Cassandra, Chris, Isaac, and Selena. Let's hear that. <laughs> It's a good month when we have five campers. It's a good two weeks when we have five campers. Yeah, those guys are really rocking it. Yeah, baby. What's that? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was outstanding. Let's <laughs> <laughs> use that on the tape. Well, let's, uh, let's hear it for okay. our wonderful room. Hello. Uh, every now and then, I like to do a couple things. Have I told you lately? how much I love you. <laughs> you guys work so hard. Did you just shout it from the rooftops that our April was the best April that this market center has ever had? I mean, that's truly unbelievable in the economy that we're having, in the market that we're having, and we don't want it to go unnoticed. We see how hard you're working, and we are genuinely so appreciative of it. So thank you. I love you. I love working for you and with you. Um, I also love um, all the systems and all the teams that we have here. And every now and then, it seems like we just need a little spring cleaning. We just need a little reminder and a little refresher. So my broker minute today is not going to be anything profound. And hopefully 75% of these things, you'll say, yep, already in my system, I already know that. But in effort to help uh, mainly the front desk as they are doing things, entering and changing your listings, and also to help me as I'm doing um, compliance audits, I just want to remind you of a handful, kind of a laundry list of things. So there seems to have been some recent confusion about um, listing contracts and what the effective date of a listing contract is. But basically what we try to do as we enforce and help you comply with listing contracts is we don't want you to have to come to us a month later and say, oh no, I lost out on this listing because of a technicality. So just remember, the North Star MLS wants you to have uploaded your listing within two days of when you sign it. So that means you can't sign it, change the start date, and let it roll around in your briefcase with you for two weeks. If you have it signed, the North Star MLS wants it uploaded into their system, and we do that using a withheld listing. So please just remember to do that. Also, when you create an opportunity, it's so easy, especially for those buyers, to just name it as a buyer's name, but it really, really helps the systems here in the office. Cami is shaking her head. <laughs> if you please be sure to change it to the address of the property that they then went under contract on. It helps Matt, the front desk, and I all find it when you've named it the address. Um, it's also very easy to just upload a whole PDF of your purchase agreement plus all the addendums in the purchase agreement folder and command. But if you help us out and make sure and break up and split up all those documents, that's much appreciated. Yes. It is very easy to do. If you do not know how to split them, appointments will take 10 minutes tops. Just have a PDF. Yeah. Um, also, um, something that I see a lot is, I know you guys go the extra mile when you submit a file to command by just letting me know that you've sent out the request for trust funds, um, but you can then just replace over that once you've received the trust fund settlement. It, it gives me, believe it or not, a little bit of anxiety when I approve a file and I don't see that the trust fund settled. Uh, is in there because, you know, it, it happens. It's embarrassing when you come to a closing and you see that your trust fund has been settled. So just go through and make sure and just upload that. You don't need to add it as an additional and an additional um, placeholder. Just you can replace right over it and it, it does show me the history of it. Um, when you make um, changes in command, please always remember to click the button that says submit to the market center. 
And this is going to be really helpful to the front desk. Um, they seem to get a lot of calls and emails that say, hey, will you just change the status quick on my listing? But the, the <coughs> challenge that they have that is the hardest is if you have a listing that is sold subject to something, whether it's the CIC review or if it is the um, uh, home inspection or whatnot, you need to be very specific to them about what that is. I want it sold subject to, you know, still active, but sold subject to. And I'm so can't, glad Cammie's in here today because she's the one who's given me the best one-on-one -on -one <laughs> contact. I'm like, preach, girl, preach. Um, all right. Um, if your listing opportunity happens to be returned by the front desk, be sure to make updating those a priority, even if you have your own ad edit privileges. So something that they're finding is when it does ultimately change to pending, if there's still documents in there that it got listed, but those documents weren't compliant, that could be a real problem if the Department of Commerce came knocking on my door. So even if you've had the chance to update those things, but you forgot to upload them to command, you've then changed it to, you know, from coming soon to active on your own, if you have your own ad edit privileges, we need to make sure and have those documents here. Hey, Melissa, did yeah. you skip the one just before that? Because I know that's a big one. When, when changing the yeah. status? Um, I hope that I covered it. I hope I articulated it well. Okay. Well enough, but would you contribute? Well, it just you see? if you like go to pending, if you want to go to pending, the front desk <laughs> can't just do pending without some additional information. So they might reach out to you and say, "What's the closing date? What's the cost? Things like that." So be really specific when you're. This is the selling agent. Selling agent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm sorry. A really yeah. Good point. So they just need they just need detail. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a really good addition. Um, also, you know, a lot of times the front desk will just see, receive a purchase agreement, but actually you don't need to email that to them. You don't need to email the, the actual contract to the front desk for any reason. Um, you just need to put it into command and then you can email them to let them know that there's been a change in the command opportunity if you wish. Um, also something that has, um, it, it's a policy, it's a long-standing policy here. Um, when you may buy or sell a home of your own or investment property of your own, um, you can go ahead and save yourself the commission on that. You know, you can reduce that from the price. You can you can do some things, but you have some flexibility and some choices there. But one thing that you don't have flexibility on is we do still collect the BAC, and it is um, it is just standard policy. Now, certainly you can make exceptions, so you can come to me, you can make those requests. Ultimately, Olivia is the decision maker on that, but there are still flat expenses here related, you know, to the front desk works, Matt's work, my work, and whatnot. So it is a policy. There is still a 499 BAC on personal transactions, and it is important that you remember that the minimum listing commission, which is a policy that you can access on our dashboard, is 5%, and our minimum co-op um, payout is 2.7%. And again, we are willing to be flexible on some of those things, but it's hard for the front desk to read your mind that perhaps I've given you permission to do that or you feel like you have your own permission to do that. So just dot your I's, cross all your T's, make sure and have an email or a text confirmation with me that you then can upload into command so that the front desk can see that. Anything that I missed, as long as Cammie's here and Victoria's here, anything else that you feel is worth kind of doing the spring cleaning on? I think that's awesome because those are the things I think the front desk has been saying. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Royalties yeah. still paid on personal transactions. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's a really good reminder and clarification. All right. Well, thanks for all your hard work. You guys are working very hard and we are so pleased. Thank you so much. My app didn't work for the lockup zone. I apologize. I just figured out why. <laughs> very good, very good. Is that on Cyclone Feed Code or? <laughs> uh, piggybacking off of what uh, Melissa was saying about uh, this office just being special. Uh, I've always thought you guys kicked butt. Uh, you proved it again last month. Uh, we outperformed the rest of the market by pretty significant margins on some of these things, especially that close production on this side, 27.65 better than the rest of the metro market. It's outstanding. Um, but, you know, business is down and all across the board, but you guys are still kicking butt and that's awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll be doing this every, every month 
uh, the language of real estate. If you guys ever need anything more, I can't compete with the raw report. But if you guys <laughs> ever need any other numbers like that, please come see me. All right, thank you. Thank you. Was it yeah, baby? Is that what you said? Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I say that a lot around my house, so I pretty well got it perfected. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, but you know, back to that last slide real quick, just want to say um, one of the things I'm really impressed with is uh, we all kind of saw the market coming, right? And yes, we're not all where we want to be yet. However, it was so amazing how proactive Olivia, and I was brand new, so I didn't know what was going on, not that I do now. But with her uh, to be proactive and get bold here, and for so many of you guys to, to to take advantage of all those opportunities to prepare yourselves, and now here we are, have the best April we've had in May. This is too far behind. So thank you all so very much. So you know, uh, we have a new PC program in place. So what we've done is added some mentorship, and the mentors we have. Are Kristen and Chris. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> How this works is they are on call. One of the two will be on call at all times for our PC agents. So a lot of times ALC gets calls. Uh, anyone out of the P PC program, you'll get a call if they need it. Uh, however, if there's a PC agent who calls you and has a quick answer, a quick question, no problem. However, if they have a deep, I need to walk through a, a purchase agreement, I need help with my listing, they will call one of these two folks here. And I can't think of two, two better people. So, thank you all. What do we have coming up, Jason? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Agent Appreciation Day. So, we have a barista, a barista in the lobby for the coffee snobs. Uh, <laughs> and... What else do we have? We, well, we got a whole bunch of stuff. We have brunch. We have we really like mimosas around here, so <laughs> we're gonna have mo mimosas, and we're gonna have an incredible talk from our leader Olivia about the State of the Union, so to speak. So <laughs> stay tuned. It's going to be marvelous. This is something new. This is the first time, the first month, we're gonna kick off a health day. Uh, there's going to be more details coming, but we will bring vendors in here to do things to help us with our health. And Jason is the masseuse. So thank no. you. No, I oh, no. <laughs> no, never mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll be the one. That, I hope like the only one on the <laughs> I'm in for that. That's all. Awesome. He was going to be the acupuncturist, but he didn't get the point. <laughs> Sorry, sharp. Sure. <laughs> was that bad? That was, so, He's mark it on the <laughs> <laughs> So, mark it on your calendar. Uh, that's coming up very quick. It's We're a week to, from today. A week from today, and more information is going to be coming. So, look forward to having you there. Six personal perspectives. This has been well attended and well received. We've had some incredible teachers. The next teacher coming up is Kristen Rizak again. She's just all over the board tonight. Um, and that's, which one was that one? She's at Ooh, your limiting moves. Remove the limiting moves. Outstanding. So that's going to be great. Grow your profit share. We're putting in systems to make it simple for you guys so that, you know, you can get those car payments made without even, you know, on the 21st, get it all paid for by work that you've done just once. And that's sharing with us. Anything else? Maybe you want to talk about the crop shares. I just yeah. did. No. <laughs> <laughs> Try that needle and joke on me again. <laughs> um, so today we're going to start market of the minute at 1245 with our last mega agent uh, mastermind. There were a number of issues that kind of came up and I just said, all right, I'm going to get here at 1245 today. To do uh, market of the minute in here. Let's fix whatever it is today. You got a concern, you don't know how to do something, let's fix it today. I'll be here from 1245 until we are done at 3 p.m. when I have to go to Dublin. But that gives us plenty of time. Let's fix it now. Let's, I don't care what it is. You want to do a Facebook ad? Let's jump in and do that. 
You need some help getting your things organized. You need to know about tags. Just show up. Let's get it done. I will be here. We will do it together. Your question, I promise somebody else has, and we can help fix them all at the same time. Woo! <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> can you talk about marketing management? I could. <laughs> but I do want to bring up my good friends, Brian and Drake, to talk about the fantastic piece of paper that's in front of you yes. and what that all means and why that's so great. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. Jason just mentioned this uh, awesome pie that we've got in front of you. This is. A uh, list of all of our unique programs that set SNAP apart from some of the other lenders. And specifically, I wanted to highlight our NAP Cash program. It's official. Uh, BAP, our cash offer program, is switched, officially named, switched over to NAP Cash, just to kind of make it easier for everybody to understand. Uh, if you're not familiar with NAP Cash, it's just a, it's an awesome program to compete against all these multiple offer scenario situations that you're probably in right now where you can make a non-contingent, quick close cash offer. And if you want to attend the training, let me know. I'm going to post it in the group along with this flyer uh, in the Facebook group. So Brian's going to talk about maybe another program. Okay. So at the top, uh, I want to just touch on our five-year uh, rate protection pledge. Basically, we need, you know, rates have been, you know, two plus years ago, we were below three. January, we were up over seven. Uh, and we came back down, but now we're creeping back up. We don't want our customers to wait around to buy when rates come back down. So as an incentive is buy now, when if rates do drop, hopefully they will, we will waive all our lender fee and the appraisal so they can refinance to a lower rate if it comes into play, all right? So just a reason, another tool for you to, let's buy now. There's no reason to wait. Okay. So if you guys got any questions about any of these specific programs, please let us know. You, you know where to find us. We're right around the corner. Um, and if you'd like this uh, flyer co-branded with your own information, let us know as well. Uh, it's a great way to something to post on your social media platforms to show you know the, the various buyers out there what, <coughs> what you guys have access to in terms of all these awesome programs that we provide. So. Uh, let us know if you if you want. You can email Brian or I, or just find us in our office. We'll get this call ready for you. Oh, there's a letter. It's from the president. <laughs> and the winner is. <laughs> so I got this letter from Pastor Eric. Hello, Brian. I wanted to again thank your entire group for being such a help at Prince of Peace last week for your Red Day event. I again want to really, really, especially thank the mulching team for their hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> thank you, Brian and Drake. You're going to for lying. Well, we've got it on the screen. <laughs> right. One of the things I love about this sheet is if you've been on any of Colin's uh, conversational Colin calls, these are all answers to objections that clients to have right now to buy. Ways to help them overcome the issues that they're having in the market. Every single one of these things is an option to help your buyer overcome a potential objection you have, they have to doing business. So understanding this and being able to talk about it is fantastic. I also want you guys to know, because if you don't remember last meeting, Drake and Brian were a little mad because they had the sliding heads. So I switched them back to normal. <laughs> uh, oh, did I really? I don't know. Now, I really want to say thank you, Brian and Drake, because I do take some liberties uh, with your picture. And uh, I, I just want to show some of the past pictures I've had, but I wanted to be fair because it's not always nice to pick on people. So I wanted to be fair and show you what it'd be like if it was Jamie and Jason. <laughs> now, I don't know if you'd agree that these are all more attractive people. I don't know. But at any rate, that's Jamie and Jason. Those ones at the bottom right are definitely more attractive. 
<laughs> and I go, wow, how come I'm always the comedy guy and you're the straight man? I want to know which one of you is Booba. <laughs> All right, so with that in mind, I did want to take a moment and say happy anniversary, Jamie. Um, I'm having the opportunity to work with you. What I love about Jamie is he moves with his heart. And that's a strange thing in business. I mean, in business, most times you lead with your head, and you have to lead with your head because there are times that that's the most important thing. But what makes Jamie special is the balance of heart and head. You know, when you have a conversation with Jamie, it is coming from the heart, and it makes it so much easier for him to tell you you don't know how to do acupuncture. But <laughs> he's telling you that from his heart. So thank you, Jamie, for the year of service you've given. It is such a great pleasure to work with you on such a regular basis. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you all. <laughs> you're asking yourself, what's next? Well, I have, and I'm not even joking, I have two of the finest minds in this building right now coming on down, uh, Kelsey and Abby. And they're going to talk a lot about marketing and also just what fun they have. Um, but I will let them do the talking because better at it than I am. that don't know, um, I hope you know. I'm Kelsey, I'm the marketing coordinator here at the Market Center. Um, I'm also your guys' marketing when you need me. Um, and then we have Abby here. Hi, I'm Abby. Um, I'm with the Redwing Homes for Sale office down in Redwing. Obviously, I do all the marketing there. I'm also a real estate agent there and um, do some freelance marketing as well. So I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So how we're going to do this is I kind of took it and I'm like, well, we're going to do more of like a podcast. So I'm going to ask her some questions. She's going to ask me some questions. If you guys have any questions, we have questions at the end, or if you want to kind of have us explain a little bit more on the questions, please just, it's an open table. Everybody communicate, um, talk about your pain points, what you have questions about, that's what we're here for. So. <laughs> Kind of just get started. Can you ask me first? Sure. Okay. First question is What's a service that you provide that you believe is being underutilized by agents and could benefit them, and why? Um, so, a big one are newsletters and your 32 touch. Um, or 36. <laughs> I'm taking two out because I'm doing them. Okay? <laughs> Uh, I think, and also social media, uh, it is a free, for the most part, platform, and it's free, so why we're not using it, I don't know, um, and I think uh, newsletters, that's also something that I can help you out with, it's also just a touch out there, um, if it's doing your featured listings, doing client reviews, um, doing if you have giveaways or just kind of a big thing, the events going around the community, what's happening, just kind of getting that touch out there to help bring them back back in. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, maybe before you go on, yeah. um, may I please ask a question? You may. So if you want us to utilize that more, mm -hmm. what specific action steps do we need to take? Um, so if you want help on my end, um, we have the marketing menu in the table tents. Uh, you can scan that, schedule an appointment, even if it's not something that you guys want to pay for every month, I can actually help you come up with a general outline of what it would look like and then you could plug in your information to go. Um, so you can, or I can plug in the information every month so it's taken off your hand and you don't even have to worry about it. 
does that answer? Sort of. Yeah. Maybe yours goes along with it. Can, can you make an appointment with you on the kwpr You can. <laughs> yes. There's a link right on there, too. Yep. Or even if it's just sitting down and be like, okay, what do I do? I think that's a big thing. And we talk about it later is social media and marketing is an beast of its own. And a lot of people get very discouraged with it. So even just to sit down and be like, okay, what do I do? Like, and I'm, I'm there to hold your hand. I almost would think of it a little bit as like an accountability partner. Because I know yep. I'm supposed to be doing a lot of these things, but if I only report to myself, it won't get mm -hmm. done. But if mm -hmm. I schedule a meeting and let you know yep. I want to join this and do it quarterly, for mm -hmm. example, yep. would be my accountability partner. Yep. Okay, thank you. I just want to put in my two cents worth. I always enjoy reading the Cedar Haven yeah. newsletter that comes out. They send it to the front desk. And usually it's a Saturday or Sunday where I take a little bit of time and I don't like just dump it or put it into a file. I leave it there and I go back when I got a little bit of time to read it. So I just wanted to let you Thank know, you. Sarah, that very Stacy does a very good job. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you. it does touch a lot of people, and I'm just letting you know that the front desk, if you do one, include us. Because we'd like to know what you guys are doing. And include even other agents in the building, just so I mean, for the most part, you share ideas too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a big community, so use those resources. Yeah. All right. Um. So of course, you just want me to go in order. Is that? Okay. All right. Um. What? <clears throat> what's so important when it comes to um, creating a marketing message from a right. like your guys' standpoint? Yeah. So. I think what it really comes down to is think about who your audience is. If you're primarily a buyer's agent, if you're listing agent, if you're both, if you're starting out, who are the people you're trying to reach the most? What do they care about? I think it's so easy to get in the mindset of, oh, I have an idea to post, I have another idea, just seeing other, grasping at straws, really. But think about, put yourself in their shoes, okay? So like, say you've been working a lot with first time home buyers. What are they interested in knowing? everything they don't know anything right so what is earnest money what are closing costs um what's a pre-approval why do i need to get that when like i really try to put myself in that mindset quite a bit because i can see myself veering off into these funny videos inspo pics look at this house look at this thing that's great and people love that too but i think it really comes down to what can you do to help that person understand and what will they see as valuable does that make sense? Yeah. Abigail, uh, are you using video to answer those kind of questions, posting those or on YouTube or sure. what would be an example? For example, earnest money, how would you explain briefly if you could? Yeah. Um, for example, earnest money, I just did a post a couple weeks ago. It was just a static graphic post for the carousel. So it's just a group of, you know, five pictures. First one said, what is earnest money? definition. The next one is, when do you need it? How do you get it? Things like that. Another great way is just, yeah, hold your phone up, talk about it, post that. You can really do it in a variety of ways. And I like to mix it up, you know, because it's kind of boring to always read a graphic. Not everyone does that. And some people are more, if your video comes up, then they're going to watch it. But it's also good to mix in what you're comfortable with making as well. If you're not comfortable in the camera starting out, don't be in the camera. You don't have to. You can still make valuable content in other ways. Would you agree then that if you make these sorts of videos, one, you can recycle them after a certain amount of time, but if you keep them in a place that, and you have a new buyer, you can refer them to your library of commonly asked questions, and you've already got this whole library that's available to them, that can really kind of, you can get that information to be even before your listing presentation, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. We put um, QR codes on all of our CMA docs, all of our listing presentations, everything to all of our social media. And we try to promote that in a helpful way, not just a, here's some entertainment, look at our faces. It's more like, we put valuable content over here. If you are interested in learning more about these types of things, scan this code, go to this link, however. And like you said, you can recycle that content even months later. Social media is quick, let alone your, say you have 500 followers, not all of them are seeing everything every time. In fact, like 
70 to 100 of them. Um, so yes, absolutely. You can recycle that video. You can use it as many times as you want. And you only have to maybe make it for a minute, you know, so there's a lot of value in that. All right. Next. Um, one point on that too, even if you kind of getting those ideas of what are people asking, like what are your agents asking, making notes of those. Like when you're sitting down in meetings, what are their questions? And using those to then create the content. Um, even going on Google and just being like, what are the top questions that people are asking in real estate right now? And using just that. So the work is done, you guys are the masterminds behind it and you have the answers to so just putting it out there. I do that a lot. I just Google, what does someone ask their buyer? Like if I'm drawing a blank, I'll just Google something. And there's millions of answers. So <laughs> here, there's always Google. Um, all right. For a new agent that has no marketing experience, what would you recommend they do to start out? I think the big thing is just get started. Um, like I mentioned, it's a scary kind of beast. Just do it. Um, kind of getting an overall brand look, feel. We talk about feel all the time. Just getting your age or your clients familiar with what you look like um, and just doing it. Jump, jump in. Just do it. Um, like we, you had mentioned, it's very quick. Not that much. I mean, it's the internet. I mean, it's always out there, but it goes by by people's faces. So even if you mess up, just get up and do it again. Um, with so many different digital marketing channels available, what or how should an agent decide what to focus on? Yeah, I think that's a big one when it comes to the intimidation feeling like there's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's all of these things. So what I, I think about kind of to your point of just get started, what are you already using? What are you already comfortable with? I think for a lot of people that's Facebook, right? Because that's been around forever. If you're not on Facebook, that's more wild than to be on Facebook. So let's say you don't have Instagram, you don't have TikTok, but you already have Facebook. Are you utilizing that to the best of your ability? Does your um, page have all of your links, all of your information for your real estate, not just for your friends and family, just personally. So I would say start there, optimize your web page on that platform. And second, um, let's say you've just been posting, you know, personal things on that page your whole life. Start with just sprinkling in some real estate content, however uncomfortable that may feel. Maybe it's one post a week starting out. Let's say you do that for a month, the next month, try two a week, try posting on your stories. By six months or so, it's just gonna feel more normal and people will see you as not just their friend on social media, but a real estate agent. And I think just making those little switches into how you already utilize social media can make such an impact that you're not even aware of. Um, that being said, you could translate that into any of those social medias, right? If you're already on Instagram and not on Facebook, utilize your Instagram even more and then dabble in it. Just use what you know and what you're comfortable with because it, it is intimidating and it is scary to utilize all of these things at once. I don't think you should go and make a Facebook and an Instagram and TikTok on the same day and say, I'm going to be a pro at this at the end of the month. That's just crazy. Um, pick one, stick with it, figure it out for a little bit, and then if you feel comfortable with it, you're off from there. Yeah. Should I make my post on my Facebook business page or on my personal page? Um, that's a big question. And honestly, I go back and forth on that because I say if you already have a personal page that you worked on, say you have like thousands of friends or even hundreds that know you and they know your face on there, start there. Honestly, I think if you don't have any Facebook at all, actually, you need a Facebook personal account to make a business page. So if you don't have anything on that personal account, just maybe make the page. But if you already are utilizing that personal, it's fine to just Go mingle because I always think if people already have that personal relationship with you through that platform, it's even better, right? So just use that as you've been using it. And I think to piggyback on that is don't overwhelm yourself either. So if you're going to go from having a personal page and a business page, most people typically post a lot more to their personal page than they would a business page. And so it, it gets into this like, it becomes it's too much, too overwhelming. So to keep it, 
I think intertwined. I would personally, I, from everything that I've read and all the research I've looked, is as long as you're not posting that you're partying every weekend and all this inappropriate stuff, <laughs> you can totally intertwine the two. I, I did kind of cheat with that question to a certain extent because I think it's really important that you focus on your personal page. They both nailed it right into the part, right? You focus on your personal page because you already have the followers. If to get them on your business page, you then need to convert them and say, hey, I know you normally see me here, but please start looking for me over here. That's a Herculean effort, and you're better off posting on your personal page and sharing to your business page, thinking of your, your Facebook business page maybe as the, the old school yellow pages. You know, if I want to find out information about your business, I go there, but I'm going to see you in the stuff you do on your personal page, because that's where you see me all week. I do want to add to that. I think um, what has helped some people with that conversion is changing your name, um, for example, from Gabby Rowan to Gabby Rowan Realtor. The searchability for that is huge. Um, I think that's why some people have had pages in the past, because if um, clients are trying to find you via social media. They're going to put in real estate agent or realtor at the end of your name. If you change your personal account to already have that as your name, then you don't have to make that business page. Because that's the biggest part of the business page is to people, for people to find you. Um, so just to kind of build on that. Just, I was just going to mention, on, but if you're going to post real estate related, you need to put your company name there too. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, 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 I know I see a lot of ads that don't have the company name and they're going to, Congress is going to come after them. Yeah. Yeah. Like in your bio, just put the bad information in there on your personal page. Um, so this is probably because I'm behind the times because I have my admins do everything for me, you know. Um, <laughs> but I've always heard that you weren't supposed to post a bunch of your business stuff on your personal page because there were some rules with Facebook that they changed that. There might be some ad creation guidelines like um, when it comes to five. Facebook oh, ads, um, but I mean, I haven't seen any issues with saying, hey, everyone, check out this new listing I have. Here's a link to it on your personal page, things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, nothing that I was it Isn't it like one in five? Usually yeah, one, 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 one business, business ad for every five yeah. personal posts or something? That's what I heard too. I don't remember hearing that. Yeah. And it could be the social media world has changed so much that everybody's an influencer now yeah. that they're promoting their, right. their own stuff. Yeah, yeah. that is sure. I'm sure that. Yeah. Yes. So for you, uh, what are some common marketing mistakes you see agents make and how could they avoid them better? So I am not the best at this, but staying consistent. <laughs> Saying if you're gonna do it, commit to it. Have someone that's gonna hold you accountable and do it and get started. Um, I think a lot are like, oh yeah, great ideas, squirrel, and it turns into that you have this great presence and then you drop off. Where if you want the business and you want to see the funnel come in, you need to be consistent and continue to do it. And it takes time and it's gonna be hard work and you're gonna it and you're not going to see the results that you want but you need to keep doing it um do you have any tips for agents that want to improve their social media strategies i have tons of tips but <laughs> um i feel like this answer really connects with what you were just saying i'd say the biggest thing is prioritize and plan um, I'll give a little bit of an example of how I run this at our brokerage, um, but this can be different for everybody and everyone's schedule. So here's an example. You take 30 minutes once a week or an hour every two weeks, an hour once a month. You sit down. That time is dedicated to your social media strategy that month. Um, and that could just look like you scrolling on your phone and finding five ideas that you like or are cool. Or it's maybe looking at your calendar and saying, hmm, I have an open house in two weeks. We have another new agent. And oh, people have been asking me this question a lot. I bet I should answer that on social media. Taking that allotted schedule, calendar time to genuinely think about it. And then, all right, you have your ideas. When can you find time to, whether it's make a graphic, hire someone, have a meeting with them to make those graphics, 
sit down and film yourself or have someone help you film, just really dedicating time to that. And I think making it um, like every single month or every single week at that same time really helps. Um, along with that, we do a lot of content batching. And what that means is, I think it's the first week every single month, um, I meet with a few of our agents and we'll just film like five or six videos with them within 45 minutes to an hour. And it takes so little time because I come to them with those ideas already laid out. Here's the script. Here's the, the meme we're going to do. Here's the funny thing. Um, here's the question I've been hearing. Or, and then they'll come to me with some ideas. They typically don't <laughs> because they're busy being real estate agents. So I say, what do you think about this? And then I'll get the yes or no. Um, but it's so much, I found it so much easier through trial and error over the last couple of years to just say, hey, you're busy, I'm busy, we have 40 minutes. Let's just knock out all of these videos. And then I have video content for a month. And that took 40 minutes on a Monday, you know? So that's been extremely helpful for me. And then I typically just do the once a week planning of, okay, I wanna do these four posts this week, these three. Um, you can schedule them now, which is amazing. Even if you don't want to, just make a note, this day I'm gonna do it, just do the post. Um, Another thing, and Jason would love this, chat GPT can write <laughs> scripts for you. Yes. Literally, you go on and say, I have or write a video for X, Y, and Z, and it literally will write a script. So all you gotta do is just type it into the keyboard. <laughs> I have one more note I wanted to say with that. Um, I think the more you start doing this and practicing, the more you have social media in the back of your head and can utilize it in just your day-to-day -day realtor activities. I mean, real estate agents do so much that the general public would understand or see. Um, like you just had a closing and you had to haul out all this stuff from the garage they left there and you're throwing stuff at the dump. Put that on your stories. That's interesting. People don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So just keeping that in the back of your mind, most things are postable. Most things are easy engagement and people like to see behind the scenes. Or even ask, just ask your clients, what do you guys want? What would you like to know? What do you want to see? That's a huge one that is like, ask what they want. See what they want to see. All right, how do agents ensure that their marketing efforts are in compliance with local and KW laws and regulations? Yeah, so this one is a fun one. Um, we do have a branding identity guide on the dashboard, um, but if you need any additional questions, you can either reach out to Melissa or myself and we can direct you or help you with anything that you need. Um, when it comes to anything printed, we do have to approve that we are being compliant. So to kind of keep that in the back of the mind. Um, we don't want you guys go printing something and then us be like, eh, it's not compliant. So, you just gotta be careful with that. I would just urge you to remember um, every time you um, make, every time you make the impression that you are giving real estate advice or talking about real estate, if you can weave in that you are licensed with Keller Williams Preferred Realty, you will be thankful in the end. I know it doesn't always space right, and it doesn't always look so cute, um, but make sure it's prominent on your page in general, and then try to weave it in to the statements that you make. The Department of Commerce will be more grateful for that than you. <laughs> um, how do you stay up to date with the latest social media trends? How do you find different trends? Um, so I think the biggest thing you can do is follow people, follow every agent, you know, follow every brokerage, follow, um, the small guys and the big guys, along with obviously past clients, future clients, everything like that. But just by doing that, every time you're on your phone, you're being bombarded with ideas, right? All it takes is just saving one of them. You know, I want to do something like this or what a great idea, or I liked that sound or that context, whatever it is. So I don't even plan doing this. I just, I go on my phone, just like probably all of you, and you're seeing things, but you just have to see it in that new light of, oh, could I do that? Or what can I pull from this idea? 
it's not stealing getting inspiration from all of these great ideas that are out there um, mm -hmm. because it's your face it's your message um so i just anytime every single day i save things um, on instagram i save them on facebook um, it's really easy to do and then when i'm prioritizing that later in the week i just go through all the things i've saved and i'm like oh i like those three ideas let's do that i've already done the work just by being on my phone which i already am so i think just um, making sure you're following great accounts that are already out there other local agents other agents all around the country um as you can find a lot if you're actually looking that's what i do is i'll take like a screenshot or i'll video record it and then i'll save it into a photo album that's specific for social media. So like teams and stuff, you do that and you can share it amongst the team so everybody can kind of put all their ideas into it. That's another great idea. And then like you had mentioned, to go back and just be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Because I mean, again, it's in front of you and you're like, yeah, that's an awesome idea. 10 minutes later, are you going to remember it? So to kind of keep track of that. Um, how do agents create a strong online presence for their real estate business, including a website and social media? Um, so like we mentioned before, post it and staying consistent, staying accountable. Um, I think website, the plus is with KW, we are able to have a website. You don't have to put the man work into creating one. Um, and then just making sure you're linking everything back. Using QR codes, linking anytime you are doing a story or anything on your social media, making sure that your website or the link to your app to download your KW app is all present. So every single time they see it, it's right there in their face. Kelsey? Yeah. You recently created, you know, a, a, something for me, mm -hmm. and that QR code is specific to that property landing site mm -hmm. on my command website. Mm -hmm. So if I had another property, I would need a different QR code to land on that property. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? Not necessarily. Well, unless you use that same, if you don't go and create a new one, if you go into the current one and change your listing, then it should be, it would use the same QR code. Which one to use that? I'm not sure I'm following that, but we can have that discussion later. Yeah, so <clears throat> QR codes are funky, but so we have a landing page that we made in command, just so everybody is on, that we put a listing on that landing page. So if we were to go into that same landing page and change the listing, then the QR code will be the same. It would direct. Oh. But if you wanted to keep the, the original listing you had on there as yeah. an example yeah. of how you do the marketing, you would then need a separate, separate one. Yeah. Okay. And they're really good what? shots of that one. What? <laughs> Which for yeah. yours, I don't think, because that QR code has that listing on it anyway, we wouldn't be using that again. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> so marketing can be very overwhelming and you are lucky to have marketing as your background. What advice would you give agents that don't have marketing or don't know where to begin? Um, meet with us and come to this talk, obviously. Um, I think, I mean, you know, I kind of said this before and you did too, so it's tearing, but just start really small. Make that first post if you want to leave. Open an Instagram account, look at others, see what they're doing, um, and stay consistent. It's so easy to get excited and make all these accounts and fall off after one month. That's why it's so important to start small. You don't want to burn yourself out and realize you're not doing anything. I think um, especially the younger generation um, is always looking up who they're going to work with on social media. If you go on someone's page and they haven't posted in six months, are they an agent anymore or what are they? Are they too busy to work with me? What are they doing? Um, I think that's why consistency is so important. It's not to make you do more work so that people can see that you're still trying, you're still relevant, you're still putting things out there that are helpful to me, make me want to work with you. And I think it even goes further than social media. You don't even, I mean, yeah, on social media, because it's free, it's postcards, emails, text, 
calls. I mean, marketing comes in a lot of different forms. So utilizing those different forms and just getting connections with them. Do we, anybody have any other questions, comments? I think we're, yes, my dear. Um, email signatures. What's the best way so that they're not removed if email so that they actually see the signature the links in there because i've tried doing it and a lot of times it's actually happening now where all they see is that little picture thing and not my actual email signature um, if you have any links or anything and i you can speak to this too um i found that it's more beneficial to put the links above so if you were to look at mine, it's like schedule a 30 minute meeting and I put it above so then they can see that those are links uh, because you're li I, I don't know how often people actually click on the links within the emails. Um, as far as the picture, uh, email signatures, put your important information in there. Obviously, if you're emailing them, do you really need your email in your email signature? <laughs> I mean, phone number, making sure that it's large enough that they can read it. Um, name, of course, and just, I mean, do your main information that you need. Your brokerage affiliation. Yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, of course, like any of your links or anything or any way that you want to direct them to somewhere else, I would put them above email signature and do put a snazzy line to get them to click on it so they're going to entice that they want to click on it so if you wanted if you wanted like the facebook logo on there so that they can click on that would you embed it in that picture or would you i would put like check out our facebook page here and then have you it have those for ages 19 i call you okay <laughs> sounds good <laughs> Can you show some cool Instagram posts? So, all right, so she had kind of mentioned some educational posts that they have done. Yeah, let's show you that. Strategy of purchasing. You know, we don't want to go out there and be like,
I mean, the comps are. And then they just bottom. Well, I do think y'all 20 some years ago made me ready to see a little office down in Lakeville. So I've kind of been here for the whole ride up to this point.